trauma is what they call non-declarative memory. It is not the thought in your head. So if, I, if you think about the most traumatic event you had in your life, the thought that rises in your mind is not the trauma memory, which is not the predominant way that it's stored in the brain. Pre, uh, trauma memory is non-declarative, which means to not say memory. So it's sensory memory. It's a taste, a touch, a feeling, a sensation. It's associated with the five senses. When a person experiences trauma, their brain encodes, a flashbulb encodes billions of bits of sensory information in that moment in an effort to create a template within which the, the person can use to evaluate potential events in the future. And so what you see is that why do people get continually reactive in certain environments, certain situations? It's because the trauma memory, the sensory memory is being triggered and that person is reacting as if they're re-experiencing that particular event in their past. Um, I tell people this, you know, if you resonate on that memory that you brought up in your mind, uh, the thinking memory of that, uh, if you resonate on it long enough, what will happen is you will actually start to feel something in your body. You'll feel anxiety, you'll feel some kind of stress or some kind of bodily sensation. That's actually the tip end of the trauma memory. This type of memory is much more permanent much harder to access, much more unconscious. Um, I always tell people in my trainings that if you want to understand what non-declarative memory is or trauma memory, uh, go home and unlearn riding a bike. And they say, well, <laughs> that's kind of funny. I, that's, that's impossible. And that's because riding a bike is what they call procedural memory. And procedural memory is very similar to trauma memory or non-declarative memory. It's stored in a different part of the brain, harder to access, harder to, to, to deal with.